Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking at the North Norfolk case study. This is your coastal case study and it's part of theme one, which is landscape of the UK and under paper one, living in the UK today. It's worth 30% of your uh, total GCSE. It's a one hour paper and it's 60 marks, so it's a mark a minute. In terms of what you need to know for this case study, it's exactly the same as the River Y case study. So what do you need to know? So you need to know about one UK coastal landscape. In this case, we're looking at North Norfolk. You need to know about the geomorphic processes, which is things like erosion, transportation, deposition and weathering and how they're operating at different scales. By the word scales, we're looking at um, kind of this, the size of the area we're looking at. Is it the whole coastline? Is it a little village in the coastline? Is it, you know, just maybe five or ten metres on the coastline? That's what we mean by different scales. Um, and how they're influenced by geology, which is the type of rock, and then climate, which is the weather. We need to know about the landforms that are in this area. So specifically in North Norfolk coastline, we've got the Blakely Spit. And we also need to know how people use the area, including how they are protecting the area. So how are we stopping the cliffs from collapsing? How are we making sure that the landscape is being protected? So just some general information that you may want to use in the introduction of your essay questions. Uh, Norfolk is a county in the east of England, um, and you can see it just located right there. It creates a southern border with the Wash and is an inlet to the North Sea, and this one here is the North Sea. Uh, the North Norfolk coast actually runs for almost 70 kilometres and it's quite a natural coastline. So we've got salt marshes, beaches, spits, sand dunes, um, and it's quite attractive to artists and tourists alike. So this map here shows you a little more of the different towns and villages that are along the coastline, like Sheringham and Wells next to the sea. We also know that we've got a um, airport a little while away. We've got quite a few rivers as well. So again, it's quite a natural landscape. If you look really closely, just about there, we can see that we've got a spit right there, um, which is a landform within the North Norfolk coastline. So we're going to start off by looking at the geomorphic processes that are operating in this area at different scales. By that, we mean time. Was it thousands of years ago, was it you know, 10 years ago, and also by um, area. So is it a large area that's covering or a small specific location? Um, we're also going to be looking at landforms that are in this case study region. So let's start off by talking about geology in North Norfolk. So the entire area is actually covered in uh, sedimentary rock chalk. Um, and this is exposed in places like Overstrand, which is this one right there. On top of this, we also have um, a small layer of glacial deposits, and that is different rocks brought over through ice sheets. So it might have come from Sweden or Scotland, and they've all kind of ended up in this region. These glacial deposits, also known as till, which is basically a collection of different rock types, they're quite weak and they are prone to mass movement. So it's very easy uh, for them to be eroded away. And you can see that over here in this image that the cliff is sort of collapsing in on itself. Um, in one of the regions, the cliffs are actually retreating by over one meter each year. We've also got Chroma Ridge, which is a 100 meter ridge. Um, and that was made by a glacial depo um, deposition. And that's actually the furthest extent that the ice actually goes. Um, and it's one of the highest points in the region. So let's talk about the climate in North Norfolk. The present day climate is actually quite dry with some warm summers and some cold winters. The till that we talked about earlier, which is the glacial sediments coming together that are quite weak, they can crack in dry conditions, which is what causes the mass movement to occur. We can also have freeze thaw weathering occurring if there are cold winters. Now, if you can't remember what freeze thaw weathering is about, um, imagine this is our rock. It's got a bit of a crack within it and it needs to be filled with water. So it could be through rain. It could just be the seawater itself, but it's filled with water. Now, at nighttime or during very cold conditions, as we know, water will freeze. And when it freezes, it's going to expand. So if you've ever put sort of half a bottle of water in the freezer, you'll notice that it expands when it becomes ice. And so as it freezes and expands, it's going to cause this rock to sort of crack further open. And that causes it to be quite weak, quite unstable um, and can cause it to break down. 
So one of the most important landforms in this area is Blakeney Point Spit, which is formed on the north coast. And you can see it right here it is west of Sheringham. The area allows for conditions that promotes the deposition and so longshore drift has moved the sediment here and a spit has formed. Over time, the wind has blown the sand that has accumulated into sand dunes, and these are specifically found at Holcombe. And remember what I said, it's really important that you know the very specific locations of where certain landforms are fo formed to show the examiners you know exactly what you're talking about. We've also had a salt marsh that has formed at Stiff Key, and you can see it's right here, salt marsh forms behind the spit um, between the land. And here we've got Blakeney Point Spit, and this is an example of the sand dunes. Now the sand dunes have been trapped by specialist plants to keep them in place. Uh, more specifically, it is called marram grass, and they are trapped here to essentially protect anything behind it from the elements. It is a example of a natural coastal defence. We've also here got um, a habitat of seals, which makes the area quite important, not just sort of environmentally, but also economically, because we'll have a lot of tourism coming in to see the seals. And here you can see the salt marsh that has formed. Again, a really important um, environmental location as well. OK, so just to go over what you need to know and what we've already done, you, we've already looked at the geomorphic processes in the area and how they've been influenced by geology and climate. So we talked about the glacial deposits, the till, the chalk um, and the climate, so the free soil weathering occurring in the area. We've also talked about the landforms and the features associated with your case study. More specifically, we've got Blakeney Point Spit through Longshore Drift. We've also got Chroma Ridge and the cliffs are formed in this area. And we're now going to move on to talking about how human activity, including management, has impacted the landscape. So in terms of its human activity, North Norfolk is actually used by a lot of people. Um, there are many villages and small towns in the area, which you saw in the map earlier, and it's all connected by main roads. Those main roads have to be protected because that's where a lot of the businesses and activities are relying on them. So fishing, farming, forestry, and lots of businesses in the area will need those roads and will need access to those villages and towns. The area is also um, known as an area of outstanding natural beauty. So it's very popular with tourists who will visit the landscape for hiking, cycling and boat trips um, and because of its being so sort of undamaged the habitats are also really popular with visitors like the um, seals you saw on Blakeney Point Spit. Unfortunately the area is eroding and collapsing rapidly and you can see that through some of these images that I've just collected. Um, this one here is showing you a bit of a time lapse. You've got 1996, 2006 and 2012 and you can kind of see how the coastline has slowly been disappearing and the beach has slowly been disappearing um, and how important the beach actually is in protecting the cliff line because it's absorbing that wave energy and slowing it down. So these two images right here are um, of the same house, except this was just kind of a different view. Again, these homes are then slowly being taken up by the sea, um, as you can see from this one. And that does mean that a lot of people are losing their livelihoods. They're losing you know, special things that are important to them. And finally, this image here, which is again and the other one that's showing you a before and after between 1998 and 2007. You can kind of see exactly how much land has been taken away in those nine years. Um, so coastal erosion and mass movement is very, very prominent in this area. And so management of the area is really important. Planners actually face several different challenges like the um, coastal erosion, we've got storm surges, we've got sea level rise through climate change. And they have to ask themselves, is this area socially, economically, environmentally worth protecting? So there have been quite a few management techniques put into place. Now, what I would recommend is that you make sure that you know at least, at the very least, one soft engineering and one hard engineering technique. A soft engineering technique would be something that's very natural, um, using natural materials, um, whereas a hard engineering technique might be using concrete or wire or the like. It's really important that you show the examiner you know exactly where these different coastal management techniques are taking place. Um, so you can show them that you know exactly what's happening and you know exactly the impact it's having on other places in North Norfolk. So one of the places that we can talk about is in Stiffkey, 
we talked about it a little bit earlier, a salt marsh has developed um, and it has been trapped by specialist plants. This is a natural defense against the sea, so it's a soft engineering technique. It is kind of just letting it do what it does best, which is working very well. It's a very, again, an environmentally important area. Another soft engineering technique is at Holcombe, where pine trees have been planted to stabilise the sand dune system. Uh, boardwalks have also been created and the tourists are being encouraged to use the boardwalks to uh, reduce footpath erosion on the sand dunes. In Sheringham, we've got a hard engineering technique taking place. So sea walls and riprap barriers have been created to protect coastal sediments. So you've got riprap over here and we've got a sea wall here. So both of these techniques are relatively good. Uh, the sea wall is going to pr uh, protect the area from kind of storm surges where possible. Um, and the riprap is going to absorb a lot of the energy of the water. However, they can be both quite costly and they also maybe detract away from what should be a very natural area. At wells next to the sea, we've had groins and gabions being put in place. So the groin is actually a relatively soft engineering technique because they are made out of wood. Um, and you can see the impact they can have here. So on one side, it has been trapping sediment. And by trapping the sediment, we are building up a beach. When you build up the beach, when the water flows in towards the cliff line, towards North Norfolk, the beach is absorbing a lot of the energy and slowing that water down. And so when it comes towards the cliffs, comes towards North Norfolk, it doesn't pack that same level of punch. And so it doesn't erode away as quickly. Unfortunately, as you can quite clearly see from this image, it will starve the next beach of sediment. And so you're going to have higher levels of erosion here than you would have here. So you're sacrificing one for the other. Um, and people living in this area might not be happy with this. And gabions are essentially these. They are sort of steel wire cages um, where we're filled with rocks. And that's, again, supposed to absorb the energy. They are highly effective, but unfortunately, they just don't look very good in the area. Uh, and they don't kind of mesh well with the natural landscape. OK, so we have looked at the geomorphic processes. We've looked at the landforms and we've also now looked at our human activity, including management works with the area and how it impacts the landscapes. So now you know about how having groins can impact the landscape. We've talked about how um, having the seawall and the gabions and the riprap can affect the landscape, as well as other soft engineering techniques like the pine trees can have a positive impact on the landscape. So let's look at an example of a question you could get and how we would go about answering that. In this case, it says, examine the impact of coastal management on your chosen coastal landscape. Let's break down that question quickly. Examine means to consider, and in this case, we want to go in good amounts of detail. We want to look at the effect of things like groins, seawall, pine trees, and so on, on the area of North Norfolk. We need to make sure we make it specific to North Norfolk in order to gain those marks, because it's a case study based question. So in the interest of keeping this one shorter than the last video, I have laid out sort of what I would expect in a question like this. In the introduction, I might start off by locating the case study area and talking about where it is found in the UK. I might point out a few facts, such as that it's an area of outstanding natural beauty. We're looking for one to two sentences at the most. The first paragraph, I might point out some soft engineering techniques, so some natural defences. So it might be pine trees at Holcombe, sand dunes that have been located there and how they've been stabilised. I might talk about the boardwalks that have been put in to prevent footpath erosion. Notice I've been really specific about the location of these management techniques. In the second paragraph, I might talk about some hard engineering techniques. So at yeah, wells next to the sea, groins have been put in to prevent longshore drift from occurring. This traps the sediment. Um, which is great because it can absorb the wave energy and slow down the rate of erosion. However, it will starve the next beach of sediment, which means that the rate of erosion there will be increased. I might talk about sea walls um, at Sheringham, which is not a natural management technique and how that might affect the landscape. And then finally, I'll finish off with a very short summary. Now, the examiner did say that for examine questions like this one, uh, a conclusion is not necessary but it is considered to be useful. So a very short summary summing up what you've written in a sentence or two would prove to be quite good for the examiner. Another question they could ask you about is what has affected the landscape more? Is it the human activity and the coastal management that we've just talked about, like the groins, the gabions, the riprap, or 
Is it the natural processes? Is it the geomorphic processes like longshore drift resulting in a spit? Is it the erosion, the mass movement that has affected the cliff lines? Is it the geology, the climate? So the question you'll notice is quite similar to the one we talked about in the River Y, and that's because the questions will be the same. They'll be very, very similar questions, but just the case study detail will be different. And so you can pretty much prep these questions in advance and make sure you've got some ideas in your head before going into the exam hall. If you have any questions about this, again, apologies for how long the video ended up being, please either let me know, email me or pop them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll speak to you guys later. Bye.